Let me tell you the story about the time where I blew my brains out on ayahuasca, collapsed in the fetal position, saw God, and then my life changed forever. So I'm Mr. Fearless and Far, right? I travel the world doing the things that scare me. And so about six months ago, eight months ago, I foolishly thought, hey, there's very few monsters left underneath the bed here. Let's explore even deeper and try ayahuasca. And I can't even begin to explain how I had no idea how deep the rabbit hole went. So there's about 10 of us, 15 of us sit, sat in a circle. And uh, I still remember this so vividly, where there was the shaman who was pouring this green orange fluid into these small little almost shot glasses, about like an ounce, ounce and a half. And as he was doing that, his hand was reaching over the single candle that lit the entire room. And it was like a giant tarantula going across the palapa roof, the grass roof. And each one of us got this shot and this giant hand was going across, very ominous. And one by one, we would go up and we'd take this singular gulp of uh, this, it almost tasted like the, the clippings from underneath a lawnmower, almost like fuel and plants and just noxious almost and notoriously it makes you vomit so you'd have your little vomit bucket they give you and you curled up with blankets like this one and sat around the rim of this yurt and then what happens then is they blow the candle and you you sit in the dark and then 10 minutes goes by 20 minutes goes by and then you hear this very loud burp ominous to the fact that you know what's going to come when you hear a burp like that someone's going to vomit and with the vomiting, usually there's someone there who plays music, there's a harp, there's a drum, there's guitars, and that kind of breaks the mood and breaks the tension. And after 30 minutes went by, um, I hadn't felt very much. They flicked the candle back on, lit it, and it was like a zombie apocalypse. There was someone standing up, just staring, a bunch of people on the ground, some puke, and there was me and one other guy who actually didn't feel very much at all. So we went back for seconds, and the candle went out again, and then, things started to kick off. For me, I always see patterns that are very similar to this. Geometry, triangles, zigzags, usually orange, usually black, orange, black, purple, very much like, I don't know if it's because I was in Mexico, but the angles on Chichen Itza, the pyramid here, they have these very intricate zigzags. Also, I see mandalas and fractals, very much like my tattoos are. And it makes you also ask the question, so if that's what you see when you do hallucinogens, is that always there? And that allows you to see it? Or is your brain painting what it thinks it should see on the world around you? Haven't quite figured that one out yet. Maybe you have some input on it. But either way, so after two shots, feeling pretty good. And then, yeah, these feelings start bubbling up inside of you. Joy, fear, happiness. It was a positive experience, but I want to see how deep this goes. So I figured, all right, if I go up and I'm a bit wobbly and I'm seeing patterns, if I go up and I take that one last shot and then I go take a piss quick and come back in, I can cuddle back into my blanket and pillow nest and I can have the full trip. So that was my plan. I stand up, everything's swirling in patterns, but again, I can handle myself. From there, I go up, I take my third shot, pop, Look for the door. Okay, I can still figure out where I am. Stumble out the door, walk maybe 10 feet outside, unzip the pants, and go to pee. But the problem is, I was so messed up, nothing was coming out. So I stand there for I don't know how long, a minute, two minutes, three minutes, and then I'm like, I gotta puke. And so I bend over, take a knee, and I puke, and I puke, and I puke. And then I stand up, and I have no idea where the fuck I am anymore. So I stumble and I'm looking, trying to decipher the leaves and the rocks from the swirling patterns in my eyes. And I see this pile of leaves that's kind of squirming like a bunch of snakes. And I'm like, well, that's probably not snakes. It looks like leaves for a second and then it changes. I had this blanket and I just lay down, fetal position with my little butt out like a toddler, just trying to hold on to the reality. And then I close my eyes and I open my eyes and I thought I couldn't close my eyes but the reality was I couldn't tell if my eyes were opened or shut anymore. And that's when things got scary. I was bobbing in an ocean and I barely could float. I was holding onto a speeding train by my pinky finger, 
not understanding where I was anymore, lost in this world of swirling colorful pattern. And then all of a sudden with a rumble, the world opening up, like tearing open in a giant white light, like a tractor beam just hitting me right in my soul. And then this feeling of being standing in front of something so powerful and then feeling so insignificant, feeling seen, but seen in a way that I'd never been seen before. Like someone could see not only my thoughts, but inside every cell of my entire body. And also this absolute fascination mixed with this bone chilling, all encompassing terror, almost like if you had never seen inside an, a, a human body before, you didn't know how this worked. And then someone just tore a human body open in front of you. And you saw the beating heart and the puffing lungs and the food going through the intestine. You would be horrified, right? But you can't, you can't deny it. It's fascinating. It's incredible how it all works inside of our bodies, right? And in that moment, it's like I saw what, how it all worked, but I couldn't understand. Just like you wouldn't be able to understand how the human body worked unless you had some sort of lesson. I saw the guts of the world is what it felt like, but I had no idea what I was looking at. And I felt just so small compared to what I was seeing. Almost like if you showed a, an earthworm the, the blueprints to a rocket ship. The earthworm can't even begin to understand the paper in which the blueprints are on, let alone get to space. You know, I was just leagues out of, out of my comfort zone and leagues out of my understanding that there was this whole big bright thing that I don't even have the correct senses in my face sight, hearing, smell, and that wasn't even sophisticated enough to be able to see what I was seeing, you know? And with that, I felt the only thing I could do in that moment to be of any significance to the world and to whatever I was witnessing was to sacrifice myself to it. Who am I in front of this thing to exist and not give some kind of offering? But what do I give? Money? Tools? <laughs> The shirt off my back, the greatest gift we can give is our life. And I realized in that moment that I would be fine with that. Not in a suicidal sort of way even, just in like, you, you are everything and I am nothing and it is my greatest gift to you. My life can only be useful. My time on this planet is only useful if I give it to you. That was a very strange feeling. And this being that I encountered wasn't angry. It wasn't kind. It wasn't anything. It just was. It was there and it saw me, but it wasn't anything beyond just there. But that in itself was just absolutely horrific. And it, the fear felt like this primordial fear that would have been injected into us, fight or flight, when we were pawn scum of the earth, before creatures even lived on this planet. It was a creationary fear that I, I had never felt before. And it dwarfed anything I had felt with public speaking or adventuring or being in my, in a scary place or in a scary situation. This fear that I felt was an exponentially higher, tenfold higher than anything I'd felt before. And my heart was pounding, 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 pounding like a helicopter trying to take off. And the only thing that kept me going was in the very beginning of the trip, I was given the advice to remember never to fight it and to breathe. Relax and breathe. If you fight more, it'll fight you more. You have to relax and breathe. And also that every trip has an end. So there I was curled in the fetal position and with my little blanket, whispering to myself in the jungle in a pile of leaves, Hopefully it wasn't snakes. <laughs> it's okay, baby. Every trip has an end. Baby, it's okay. Every trip has an end. You're okay. You're okay, baby. Every trip has an end. Reduced to nothing was what I was. And then slowly the world came back. My senses came back. I realized I was only, yeah, 15, 20 feet away from the front door, but I couldn't even see it. And I crawled back inside on my hands and knees and I found my little nest and I stayed there until about halfway through the night until uh, almost the next day.
So what did I learn? Is it worth it? What are my takeaways? Number one, don't fuck with that stuff. I thought I knew what was behind the door. I was just such a silly little moat of dust thinking that I could understand and I was ready for everything that I saw. It was crushing. I was so stupid to think <laughs> that, that I could handle it. And even in the moment where this white light, this presence, this God, this universe, whatever it was, saw me with this piercing beam, the thing that I felt was, it was mocking me saying, oh, you poor little soul. You are a, a grain of sand in an infinite beach of our universe. You are a mote of dust. You are an atom in this giant infinite. Who are you to even think for a millisecond you could see this and understand. Here it is. Take a fucking look. Enjoy. How does it make you feel? Scared? Well, you should be scared because you are nothing. That's what the voice was telling me. Just with the light itself. That took a while to get over. But also in that moment, like I told you, I felt like I wanted to sacrifice myself to it. I had been traveling through Mexico and visiting many Mayan sacrificial sites. Arturo, my guide and friend and I, had seen crystal skulls that were lopped off virgins and placed there to completely mineralize in caves with obsidian blades, volcanic glass blades. They would have done bloodletting and, and wondered how could you ever get, like, why would you want to sacrifice yourself? I mean, you'd sacrifice victims, but some people willingly sacrifice themselves. You realize in that moment that they did do hallucinogens. There's a few of them that are around here. And in that moment, it made sense why you would give your life to whatever you saw. It just seemed like the best thing, the only use for your life was exactly that. It made me understand the Mayan world, the ancient world so much more. And also how it doesn't seem like a strange concept when you're so deep in it to actually give yourself to the universe, to God, whatever you want to call it. And because my reality was completely shaken, and honestly, six or eight months later now, I still can't say I'm 100%, I realize that fear and anxiety and all the bullshit that we, we, we lay down in our lives, and we call fear so many different names, right? Jealousy, brain fog, depression, anxiety. This is all just fear, guys. The fancy names for, this, for the same feeling. Anxiety is just undiagnosed fear. You know what I mean? So what, what these things do is they, they unwind, they, they melt the plastic. If fear and anxiety is the plastic on your life, these substances unwrap you. And that can be scary for sure, but it allows you to live and see the world more clearly. It allows you to get to that raw, real core of yourself without all that bullshit wrapping we put on ourselves to actually try and protect this core inside. And I had been reading a few books about self-image. Um, and in that moment, because my, my wrapping was torn off, I think whether it be the medicine itself or the fact that I was programming my brain with a new identity, my life this year has been utterly insane. Winning Emmys, uh, having successful TV shows, the YouTube channel is exploding, all of this stuff. I don't know if it was 100% because I blew my brains out of ayahuasca, but I can't deny that my whole view on my place in life has completely changed. So do I recommend it? And the answer would be, yeah, I do. I think it can be scary, but if you do the appropriate care after and you do your journaling and you think about why you felt certain things, you can have massive unlocks in your life. You can have mass, massive exponential gains in your accomplishments, your happiness, your self-worth, all of this can come from rocking your foundation. Travel does this, and also trips like this, these ceremonies do it as well. Another big thing this unlocked was my desire to give back. I see the world and everyone's just so stuck and anxious and they feel lost and they don't feel free. And I guess through my life for the past decade, I feel like I've collected keys to unlock how to live a bold, adventurous life, how to be more confident, how to be more fearless. And I haven't really been giving them back. We make videos here, they're great, but what have I actually done to help people? 
help people for real. And videos, no one's ever woken up and changed their life on a YouTube video. You gotta be someplace. You gotta come to someplace with, with a community and, and grow and break your foundation, but with, with a helping hand. And now it's like all I think about to the extent where I've actually organized my first ever adventure travel retreat coming up in March this year. It's the first big event, not to take you guys on a group trip, but to make an event that changes people, to give you the keys, to help you unlock your life, be more bold, more adventurous, more fearless, more confident, all of that. I learned lessons the hard way. Let me, let me do that. I'll take some of them and I'll bring them to you in Mexico and I'll teach you what I've learned so we can all live more boldly and adventurously together. Maybe you're watching this video before, maybe it's after, Either way, fearlessandfar.com slash trips is where you can find more details. But for me, the number one thing is giving back and helping people. And that came from a massive trip on ayahuasca. So, hope you enjoyed story time. We're back to the regular Fearless and Far schedule next week. I'll see you in Mexico, yeah? Yeah? <laughs>